everybody. Welcome to Life with Kristen Nicole. Today I'm going to be talking about how to save money on a cruise. A lot of people think that cruising is going to be expensive and it can be, but it doesn't have to be. So I'm going to give you guys some tips and tricks of what me and my husband do when we cruise and we cruise every single year for our family vacations. So we're going to give you what we do to save money on a cruise. So tip number one is do your research. Do your research on the cruise lines out there. We did, um, when we first started to cruise, we did, uh, we researched Royal Caribbean, Princess, and Carnival. And we just found that Carnival was always um, the most affordable way to cruise. That was back in 2008, and we've been cruising ever since then. Also, have a budget. A lot of times you can research these cruise lines before you make your budget. But you can make your budget before. Let's say if you want to go, okay, we're not going to spend over $2,000. And then you just go search your websites uh, and see what you can get for $2,000. Other times, you know, um, you just go on there and say, okay, here's the prices for these different cruise lines. Let's choose this and that's going to be our budget. Now, sticking to the budget is a whole other arena. So first off, we do have a budget. We know that we're going to cruise. So we're going to be like, okay, we know we're going to cruise Carnival. So we kind of know what we're going to be spending ballpark. Um, sometimes the budget's a little bit more. Sometimes it's a little bit less depending on what we want to do. We never ever go over budget. So here's what we do. Um, figure out what time of year are you going to cruise in because your prices are going to fluctuate. You're going to pay more for a cruise in the middle of summer than you do in the middle of winter. So my husband and I have always cruised in the off season. That will save you money. We always cruise in January or February. Next thing we do is figure out how are we going to get to port. That's an important one. That's a big one. A lot of people choose to fly to the port, which means you're going to have to have airfare. Now, um, out of seven cruises, we have always driven to port except for one time. Now, we live in the Midwest. We live in Missouri, Kansas City. And the closest port to us is Galveston, Texas. There's also New Orleans, which we've sailed out of both, but our favorite is Galveston. So we, 99.9% .9 of the time, we're gonna cruise out of Galveston. It's a 13 hour drive and it just compares better uh, financially to drive than it is to fly. We flew once to Miami to cruise and um, that did jack the price up a lot for our plane tickets, our two round trip plane tickets. But um, we decided we're just going to drive to port. So choose the way that's going to be most economical for you. Well, let me add this. When we do drive, we always like leave a day before. So we're getting there to Galveston the night before our cruise sets sail. So we do have to get a hotel. And that doesn't break the bank. It's just for one night. Next thing on the list is you have to choose what kind of cabin that you want. They have inside cabin. They have cabins with a porthole. They have suites, um, balconies, uh, ocean view. And we always, we started off doing ocean view. One year, and this was the first time we, we took our kids on a cruise. Um, we wanted to wait until the kids were like uh, two and three or three and four before we took them on a cruise. We didn't really feel comfortable cruising with infants. So we waited till they were three and four before we took them on their first cruise. So it was kind of like a last minute thing. I said, you know what, it's time, let's go on a cruise. So we got online and we found a cruise for really, really cheap because it was leaving like in 30 days. So it was like a last minute cruise. So we jumped on it, we did the research and we saw that they had no more cabins available, only inside cabins. But we were so desperate to finally get back on that cruise ship after a five year hiatus that we jumped on it. We also did a lot of research on YouTube on um, inside cabins and we figured you know what it'll be okay let's just do it let's try it we did it it wasn't a problem at all it was not claustrophobic and i know everybody probably says this about inside cabins that you're only in there to sleep and change clothes and shower that is the truth we are only ever in our cabin to sleep shower to change clothes every other uh time on that ship we are out having fun so we're not going to spend a lot of money on uh a bigger better cabin because we are literally never in there so inside cabins are the cheapest way to go now last year when we sailed out of um, New Orleans we wanted to splurge and we got a balcony room just to see what all the hype was about everybody always told us you get a balcony room you're gonna get spoiled you never want to go back that was not the truth for my husband and I and we are both on the same page with this we're never in our room we didn't hardly ever enjoy that balcony because we were never in there 
Now we're not sorry that we got it. We didn't waste money. We wanted to get it to see how it was and we know how it is now. So we went right back to Inside Cow. So, now, booking in advance. A lot of times people book like a year, two, and sometimes even three years out and you have all that time to pay on your cruise um, and you can get it for like a cheaper rate. We have only just begun doing it that way. Every time we've ever cruised, we just saw what we wanted, we booked it and we just paid for it right then. But the last two years, we booked our cruises with um, booking them a whole year in advance and then we just paid on it throughout the year. So both of them are okay. But we will probably still just continue to do it both ways, just whatever works for us at the moment. Okay, booking your cruise. When you are gonna book in advance, Carnival always has like their $49 or $50 deposit sale to where you are only paying $50 a person that you can secure your cruise and then pay for everything throughout that year. So that's what we did the last couple of years and our deposits are used or are $200 is $50 a person and we're a family of four. So we pay our $200 and then we just pay the rest on through the year. So that can help out if you don't have the full price of your cruise right there to pay for. And I believe you have to have it paid off three months before you set sail. Now, when you're booking your cruise, you also have to figure out how long do you want your cruise to last? They have three day cruises, four day cruises, um, five, seven, anything over that. We started out cruising five days, but we love cruising so much. We figured, you know what, let's do, let's do a seven day cruise next. We only do seven days. We don't do anything less than seven days. We are gonna eventually go on longer cruises. We have our eye on one cruise that is two weeks long because it's a back-to-back -back cruise. Like you get off one cruise and you just stay aboard the ship and then you go through the same itinerary again. And we're also looking at doing a cruise to Greece, which is a two week cruise. There's a lot well. that the ship will offer. They have specialty dining that you have to pay for. They have um, the arcades that you have to, pull, to pay for, pictures that you pay for, the candy store, um, excursions, um, all the shops there. It is all inclusive, but those are just extras that are out there if you want to partake in. Now, as far as food is concerned, we do not eat in any of the specialty dining restaurants. We just feel like there is food everywhere you turn. Why do we wanna pay for food when you already paid for it with the price of your ticket? Now, a lot of people think, oh, it's something different, it's something new, and that's okay. We're not downing people who do that. It's just that we wanna, we don't wanna pay for food when the main dining room has excellent food. So we usually eat in the main dining room every night for dinner, and then we eat at the Lido deck for um, everything else. So we save money by not partaking of the uh, specialty dining. Also, um, the shops on board. I do like to shop, so I'm gonna wait till they have their sales going on. And they usually happen like a couple of days into the cruise and then they have a lot of sales just throughout the cruise. So I always wait until the shops, the fun shops are having uh, their sales going on. That way, you know, they always have like a lot of $10 sales or two for 20 sales or two for 25. I always wait till they have their sales going on so that way I'm saving money there. Also, when you get onboard credit, you, um, you can use that onboard credit to buy specialty dining or um, get the arcade or candy store or something like that. Anything that you can buy on board, you can use your uh, onboard credit. Okay, excursions. Um, this is a biggie. My husband and I normally don't do over one excursion. If we do, then we, my husband's the adventurous one in this marriage, so he will go and do an adventurous uh, excursion, and then we'll probably do something as a family, like a, you know, an island tour or something like that, um, but we do not book them through Carnival. We have booked them through Carnival before, but 90% of the time, we're gonna wait till we get to port, and then we're going to book something local. We always do our research and make sure that they're a reputable company, they're gonna get you back to the ship on time, and um, we always make sure that we book our excursions for early that morning. So if something ever did happen, which it never has and probably never will, but if something did happen to where you were gonna be running late getting back to the ship, our excursion is early enough to where we can get back to the ship on our own in plenty of time to not miss the ship. So we always try to book a island tour and they're really awesome. We have done some awesome island tours. 
and Carnival is a bit expensive with their excursions where it would be cost like maybe $250 for a family of four to do an excursion with the um, with the island um, tours we've gotten away with doing a similar excursion for like $40 and I am not kidding you 40 bucks the most we've ever spent on an island private tour was like $110 I think for the four of us so do your research you can really get some good excursions if you're not comfortable with that then you know carnival is always there to book your excursion for you yes. our kids now our kids love the arcade and they have sales in the arcade to where um, everything all the arcade games are like 50% uh, off so you're usually only paying like 50 cents to a dollar for all the arcade arcade games we wait till that sale is going on and we let the kids go in and just you know have a budget for it we say okay let's spend twenty dollars so we'll they let the kids go in there and they'll use up their twenty dollars and then that's it with the onboard credit you could use that for uh the arcade as well the drink package that's another biggie one now my husband and i do not drink alcohol so we never get that but they do have the bottomless bubbles package which is the sodas and, and juices and things like that started to cruise in our first several cruises we did get the drink package but that was years ago. Now we're like, we don't need that. They have the lemonade. They have tea. I believe they have tea. I think it's hot tea. But they have lemonade. They have tea, coffee. We're not coffee drinkers, but they do have it. Um, they have the juices in the morning at, for breakfast and stuff. We don't need to pay for soda. We can go a week without soda. Okay, now our stateroom. They usually have, well, in our stateroom, they have your, um, they have your shampoo and your uh, body wash inside the shower. A lot of people don't use that, but we do because it's there. It works. Now, myself, I don't wash my hair when we are um, on board. I don't have to wash my hair uh, often like that. But uh, my husband will use the shampoo. He washes his hair every day. So my husband uses it. We just use what the stateroom provides, which is your body soap and your shampoo. We take advantage of it. It saves uh, space in our luggage because we're not packing it. And it saves money. Recently this past spring, my husband and I started seriously thinking about um, buying some Carnival stock. And we did, I did a whole video on that. So you can check in my playlist and click on that if you're interested in buying Carnival stock that will get you onboard credit. If you are a stockholder in the Carnival Corporation, they will give you a hundred dollar onboard credit every time you sail. And that's for like anything over a five, a five to 10 day cruise, I believe, or five to seven day cruise, you'll get a hundred dollars onboard credit. If you have 100 shares of stock, we bought 100 shares of stock, Carnival stock. So that, um, enables us to get a hundred dollars of onboard credit every time we sail so we have that set up and ready to go for when we cruise this september i was telling you guys before about the carnival credit card that is a good credit card to have now my husband and i do not really believe in a whole lot of debt we only use our carnival card because they give you points on everything you buy and if you buy anything that has to do with your cruise if like if you book a cruise with your credit card if you pay it off if you buy anything online that has to do with your cruise or anything that is cruise related you get double the points you can cash those points in for onboard credit so we use our carnival card quite a bit but we make sure that we pay it off in full before the end of the month so that way we are not carrying a balance on the card having to pay interest on what we purchase right once you go into port there's plenty of restaurants out most of the time we eat all of our meals on the ship because you know that saves money we book our excursions early in the day like I said before so we're done by lunchtime so after excursion we head back to the ship and then we get to have lunch okay so that is our tips and our tricks for cruising on a budget so I hope I didn't miss anything those are all the most important tips and tricks that um, I just kind of that we just do every time we cruise so if there, I missed anything or if there's a new tip or trick that you guys use that um, I didn't cover in this let me know because I'm always in for good information that's gonna help us save money so that's the video if you guys liked it please comment and subscribe if you like the video and you want to continue to get and see more content from me 
So until then, I will see you in my next video, and you guys have a blessed one.